If you will take your red hymnal and turn to page Our numbers are down today, but uh, it's, I feel the Holy Spirit with us. I'm just so glad that you're here. I appreciate everyone that's come to be with us today and to uh, join in with our service. Uh, we don't have bulletins today. Sister Kozad sent word that her car was down, and so she wouldn't make it this morning. So uh, maybe she'll get back here this evening for the business meeting. And as far as our uh, announcements go, I know that we do have business meeting this evening. Uh, be at 6 o'clock. Please make your plans to be here. Uh, you need to keep up with what's going on, and uh, that's the best way to do it. We just have mostly open discussion and have reports from our different uh, groups and committees, and so you come and be with us in our business meeting this evening. The one other thing I do remember as far as announcements go, uh, that we will have our uh, yard sale coming back up. It'll be a Friday and a Saturday. Do you remember how many weeks away that is? Two or three weeks away. Uh, so if you have yard sale items, uh, bring those and we'll find somewhere to put them. Let us know about those things. And uh, we'll, we'll try, two weeks away you say? We'll try to, we'll try to get those uh, set up and display and uh, have that yard sale. 
again, like we had uh, back in the spring. Is this on the second or second? It's the first and the second. The first and the second. Friday and Saturday, right? Okay. So our kids will be in school on that Friday, so we need, um, if you are an adult and you're off work on that Friday and would be willing to help us out, we would really appreciate it. Okay. Are there any other announcements? Do we have any birthdays? Did anyone get a head count on our Sunday school report? I think we have 21. 21? Uh, you know, those numbers are up from a few months back. I mean, we've been higher than that lately, but still, we're not back down to where we were for a spell there. So 21. What about anniversaries, birthdays and anniversaries? Anyone, any anniversaries this time? Um, in the way of prayer request, I'll read over these names again. We mentioned these this morning in our devotion time for the Sunday school. But uh, we'll remember these again. Uh, uh, a couple of the names that were mentioned this morning were one name, Jessica Hart. This is Lindsay's sister. And, uh, Haley asked that we remember her. She has a doctor appointment this week. And anxious about that. Don't know exactly what's going to come about with it. Right? And so let's remember Jessica Hart, Lindsay's sister. Uh, we had a praise report from Sue Blackwell. She says, praise the Lord. She had a doctor's uh, uh, visit and everything checks out well. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing for your uh, checkups and things. Right? Okay. We have uh, Steve Sellers' praise report. He is still in remission with his cancer and always ask us to pray during the time where he's in God's waiting room, he says. And so uh, he did get results back that he is still in remission. Kevin King is on our prayer uh, prayer list. Bob Kozad, Nick and Stacy Carmichael. Sandy Kozad is on our prayer list. Joe Shawstack is on our prayer list. Uh, Patrick Hart. I believe this is uh, Caitlin Kimberlin's brother, Caitlin Kimberlin and Ariana. It's uh, their brother. He's going in the military. Let's ask to pray for him. We have Huey Lindley, Jerry and uh, Sue's brother on our prayer list. Uh, Wesley Boy, Wesley will be having surgery coming up. And he's very anxious about this. So let's remember Wesley as he, uh, as he goes and has his surgery and pray that the Lord will be with him. I wanted to mention my uh, Malia's first cousin, Eddie Hill. Uh, Eddie Hill is uh, doing better. Uh, he had had uh, on the ventilator and uh, was not responsive, but uh, we believe the Lord answered in prayer. And, uh, he is responsive. He was taken off the ventilator for a while. And we just appreciate your prayers. I believe he's back on it now uh, because of some congestion, but. Uh, they, from what we can gather, uh, they're expecting things to turn out fine with him. So we do appreciate those prayers, Eddie Hill. Uh, my cousin, Lori Howell, is on our prayer list. Uh, we remember her. Uh, Marilyn Blackwood is uh, uh, Taylor's grandmother. And she'll be coming to have uh, uh, baptism. I meant to mention that. Baptism is Wednesday night. We do have a baptism service. And uh, that'll be this Wednesday. Remember Marilyn Blackwood, she's on our prayer list. Uh, Debbie in Madison, Jerry Morgan, Joe Shawstack, I've already mentioned John Milstead, well, he's, he's having work today. Remember him. Wayman Harper. Uh, I guess we'll stop right there. Chris and Dana, but I believe they're over there. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Now that's That goes back a page. Yes, sir.
completed surgery. Um, and my heart has been there to the doctor because this is a class of mine. And also, uh, if anyone knows Elizabeth Hope's story, she's 33, 34 years old. She died yesterday, leaving behind a husband and a six-year-old son and a nine-year-old daughter. Her mother went to school with me. So, and matter of fact, Elizabeth was with us at graduation because Mama had her. <laughs> but um, she had diabetes issues. So just remember that family because Elizabeth Holt, a yeah. blow. And then um, remember, Mother, because um, now Sandy can handle Daddy somewhat, but Daddy's getting worse. And the reason why her car's messed up, he left some stuff on. And we went over the other day to, he had three vehicles not running, and he was the last one to touch them. So he's just, he's not anything like he used to be. And she tries to just let him at his own free will, but we try, we're try we trying to reel it in, and it's hard for her. So she Remember wants, Bob. Mm -hmm. okay. because he still has, Southern line. That's the, that's the easiest way to describe it. All right. Remember Bob Cozad and Betty. All right. Any others? Any other prayer requests? We all have unspoken requests. I know I speak with uh, many others from time to time, and I know that you have unspoken requests, and uh, let's remember those as well. So let's, uh, as a church, let's join in together and go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, let's all stand, please. <laughs> Anyone like to come to the altar, that'd be fine. Uh, you don't have to, but it is available if you like to come. facing very difficult times ahead, Lord. Some of them are facing surgery, and some of them, Lord, have cancer, and some of them, Lord, have problems in their families, and Lord, we just lift them up to you, Lord, knowing that you're able to take care of all this stuff. Father, some people have financial problems, and Lord, we know that you're the one, that just like it says in your word, you're the one that causes this. 
gives us the ability to take care of ourselves. And so, Father, we just pray that you need more. We give you ourselves fresh in you. We ask you, Lord, to speak in our hearts and be real to us. Guide us, Lord, in the way that you have us to go. Father, we pray in every decision that we make that you would be a part of that decision. Give us wisdom, Lord, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Father, we lift up the service today. Again, Lord, we ask that there be one here, first of all, that don't know you. Never understood what it means, Lord, to commit their life to you. Father, we pray that that person might come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray today if there be one here that's carrying a burden, and that burden is so heavy that they can't carry it yourself. I pray, Lord God, that person would see fit to come and lay that burden on the altar in Jesus' name. I just pray that you would place it on their heart, Lord, and when that happens, that you would give them that assurance in their heart that you are going to carry that burden for them. Father, I want to pray for every married in here. Because I know, Lord, how, how the devil works. He loves to get in between a man and a woman, and he loves to bring that separation. He loves to see those kids brought up without a mom and a dad. I know how it works, Father, and I just pray that you'd be with every family, Lord, that's represented in here. And I pray, Lord, that you'd give strength where strength is needed. Father, I pray you'd give courage where courage is needed. I pray that you'd give your Holy Spirit, Lord, where Holy Spirit is needed. I pray that you'd give forgiveness, Lord, where that forgiveness is needed. Use us, Father, I pray. Lord, use us up. I pray with God that we'll go home and be just wore out from serving you. I pray, Lord, you give us strength to carry on. I pray these things in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.
you will all stand. Page 220. We'll sing all three verses.
service this coming Wednesday. Uh, John was up here yesterday working on that water. I guess it's up there. It's, it's so it's filled up and he's letting it warm up. So he'll turn the heater on sometime Wednesday. That water will be warm. Right? We have Maryland Blackwood. We have Christina Blackwood. We'll be baptized. We have one more going to be baptized. Selfie Burchett has decided, he said, yes, Brother Bobby, I believe the Lord's leading me. Go ahead and get baptized. So Selfie will be baptized too. Um, so be sure and make the plans to be here uh, Wednesday night to join in with our baptismal service. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. Uh, look, if you will, in your Bible to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 90. Psalm chapter 9. Really, really interesting to me that the Lord brought me here. There's something about this psalm that I didn't know. Because I've read through psalms a time or two. This is the only psalm that I could find after I looked at it. Uh, I believe it was Friday. That says there at the very, very top. Before you get to verse 1, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Isn't that interesting? So I'm going to read all of it. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Psalm chapter 90, beginning in verse 1. This is the word of God. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carest them away as with a flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thy anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale. That is told. The days of our years are three score, and, three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they are four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. 
Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto thy children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. As I turned to this psalm, I was amazed because I asked the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to bring to the people Sunday? And when I turned here and I was reading and I read for a while and I looked for a while and I was looking over the verses here and then early, later on as I was looking, I realized what it said there at the top, a prayer of Moses. This is the only one in the book of Psalms. In church, I've been in uh, Moses. I've been in the book of Deuteronomy. The past two lessons that we've had, I preached on it, or I taught there uh, uh, with Moses last Sunday night, and then I taught there again in the book of Deuteronomy this past Wednesday night. And for him to bring me here and open these scriptures up to me today, I believe the Lord is trying to tell us some things about Moses that we need to understand how God is and how God works in our lives and how God will allow things to run its course when we choose to be obedient to Him. Because you see, church, when we read these things and we understand what those children of Israel went through there, we understand that this is there for us an example. And when we read these things, we understand those. Verses 7 through 9. Let's notice these verses to begin with. It says, For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Think about those 40 years as they wandered in the wilderness. It says in verse 8, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. You see, my guess, it would be early on in the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Is when he wrote this. He has all of those years ahead of him. Moses would have been around 80 years old at that time. He had just learned from God that they were going to be there until that generation that complained died off. 40 years. Numbers chapter 14 verse 29 to read over this. Very important to us, church. Very important to us to understand God and understand who he is and how he thinks. Notice what it says in Numbers 14, 29. He says, Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. It says in verse 33, Your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredom. Until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days which you search the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. The God's Word translation says, You will know what it means for me to be against you. You see, church, God has feelings. He expects us to love Him. He expects us to love His ways. He expects us to agree with Him and agree with Him to the point that we're obedient to Him. Not just agree that what He says and what His Word says is right, but to agree with Him to the point of being obedient to His Word. Verse 10 and verse 10, Moses was noticing that people were dying around the age of 70 or 80. Right? Verse 10, the days of our years are three score and years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. 
God was noticing, or excuse me, Moses was noticing that people were dying off as those years began to pass by, those 40 years. Verse 11, notice it says, the power of thy anger. Verse 11, who knoweth the power of thy anger? I've got to have a footnote in my study about it. It says, multitudes of angels. Demons and men will know the power of God's anger, which had kindled a fire in the lowest hell. You see, he gets that from Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32 is the Psalm of Moses. The Psalm of Moses is what God told Moses to write down as a record against those people that had been disobedient to him. So I'm going to read to you there. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 22. It says, For a fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn under the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. You see, church, what Moses was writing here, it sees all the way to the final judgment on the whole earth. It sees all the way to Armageddon. And so this judgment that we have coming, God has planned this judgment for hundreds and thousands of years. Very important to us. Deuteronomy 4.26 we mentioned earlier. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. Write this stuff down, God says. Because what I'm telling you is going to come to pass. And when it comes to pass, You'll be able to read this and know and understand that my word is true. What I say is true. And what I say comes to pass, comes to pass. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Deuteronomy 31, 28. Moses tells the people. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. You see, God is telling mankind, I want all of mankind, I want all of the sons of Adam, I want all of the angels, all the demons, all the principalities and powers to know that I alone am God. I alone am the one that can lead you. I alone am the one that knows the future. I alone am the one that knows what's best for you. I know what's best for you even better than what you know for yourself. This is what God wants us to understand. Now beginning here in verses 1 and 2. Church, if we can grasp the truth of these verses. And I like to try to word things in such a manner that it really makes us think. And it really ties the surroundings of what we live in with what God's Word says. Verses 1 and 2. Verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. There is an eternal being out there in outer space. Think. What were Moses thinking? What were the men, the writers of Scripture thinking when they talked about heaven? They were talking about the sky. And church today, it is our duty and obligation to know and understand there is a God out there in the sky that has the power and has the authority to speak into existence the things that we know of. To form the earth and the sky and the sea and all that is there. God is the one that has created all of this. Brethren, this is scripture from front to back. God made this place. He owns this place. He can do with this place as he chooses. This is what God's Word teaches. This is what we're to understand. This is a biblical worldview. And it is the truth. There is an eternal being out there in outer space. 
He's not from planet Earth. Amen. God, from out there, He's not from here. And He created this place. Very important that we understand. He is that literal. It says, this eternal being from outer space formed the earth and the world. Verse 1. He alone. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place for all generations. God alone has been, the Bible in basic English says, the resting place for all generations. Faith in Him has been the resting place for all generations. Brethren, you think back to all the history that we know of and all the problems that men have had over all the centuries, all the way back to Adam. The only resting place for mankind is with God and with faith in Him. Placing our total faith and all of our hope in Him and His Word and what He says. He is our Creator. He is the one that is able to sustain us and to see us through. These are things that is so important that we understand there is an eternal being out there in outer space. This is this eternal being is has formed the earth and the world. He alone has been the resting place for all generations. Notice there in verse 10. Verse 10. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. You see, Moses is accounting, looking, recounting, and understanding that generation that's dying off. He's seeing the people as they reach that age and they finally pass away. And Generation, family after family after family, for 40 years, from age 20 and up, he would have watched a lot of people passing away. He's seeing that younger generation, 19 years old and younger, grow up. And he's trying to teach them to have faith and understand that God is the one in control. The days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for soon it is cut off and we fly away. You see, church, what this speaks to us today. One day, it's going to be your turn to die. One day, it's going to be your name that's called out on the obituary page. One day, for each and every one of us, the Bible says, it is appointed unto man who wants to die. And after this, Trans-affirming. 
you affirm your child's gender based upon what that child says. California bill will charge parents with child abuse if not trans-affirming. Church, this book talks all about this stuff. Okay? This nothing new. It goes back to the beginning. We need to understand this. People think that they're enlightened and finally coming out of the dark ages when all along God knows exactly what's going on. Yeah. Recently, a mini California bill would add affirming the, the sexual transition of a child to the state standard for parental responsibility and child welfare, making any parent who doesn't affirm transgenderism for their child guilty of abuse under California state law. California State Assembly passed on May the 3rd, but a co-sponsor amended it after hours in California State Senate June the 6th, Assemblymember Lori Wilson, Democrat, uh, wrote the bill and introduced it on February 14th. Uh, Senator Scott Weiner, Democrat, San Francisco, co-sponsored it. Wilson's child identifies as transgender. I just want us to understand the things that are going on in the world around us today. God knows what's going on. His word speaks of these things. These are the things that we need to be upset over as God's children. These are the things that we as God's people need to understand is contrary to God's word. We need to be teaching these things to our children and making sure our children are not indoctrinated to these evil ideologies that are there in the world around us. Amen. That's what these words are speaking for. I have a footnote here on that verse 10 where it says we fly away. Right. Interesting. The body is soon cut off and goes back to the dust. We've been talking about that. But we fly away to the spirit world, to hell if we're wicked, and heaven if we're righteous. Let's be sure to remember this. Not get caught up in the ways of the world. Be sure we understand there are things out there today that are contrary to God's word. And understand this. Verse 5 says, talking about like the grass. says, Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. Talking about the lifespan. It's like the grass. It's all over scripture. Psalm 103 verse 14 through 16. It says, For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. As for man his days are as grass. As a flower of the field so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. Psalm 37, verse 1. Another reference. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut out like grass and wither as the green herb. Read the book. It talks about like the powers in the heavens, all the treasonous kingdoms of men are like the grass that withers. Read that again. Like the powers in the heavens, Lucifer and his bunch. All the treasonous kingdoms of men are like the grass that withers. It says like the flower that fades. Right? Isaiah 40 and verse 7. The grass withered, the flower faded. Because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. This is the mindset that we need to have. Like the powers in heavens, all the trees in this kingdom of men are like grasshoppers. Scripture says. 
Isaiah 40, 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are his grasshoppers. Like the powers in the heavens, all the trees and kingdoms of men are like a worm. It says in Job chapter 25, verse 6. How much less man that is a worm, and the son of man which is a worm. How about a drop from a bucket and the dust on a balance? It says there, Isaiah 40 and verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. The Bible says the Lord simply laughs at mankind for being so disobedient and so ungodly and to think that they can stand up against him. Right? Psalm chapter 2 in verses 1 through 5. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine the vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed and we might as well say against his word. Amen. Saying let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. You see, church, God is in control. Amen. God is the one that owns this planet. God is the one that says the way it's going to be. Amen. It's so important that we understand this about God. There's another thing there in verse 11 I wanted to point out. There at the bottom, it says, Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Look at that statement right there. Verse 11 says, Who knoweth the power of thine anger? We read a footnote on that. Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Here's a statement. The depth of his goodness mirrors the depth of his wrath. Glory, hallelujah. In other words, those that are on his side, the Bible says, Eye has not seen and ear has not heard the good things that he has in store for those of them of us that love him. That's what it says. We cannot begin to imagine the good things that he has for those of us that love him and love his word like we were speaking of earlier. Agreeing with him to the point of being obedient to it. Right? Not just saying that, yeah, I know it's good, I know it's right, I know it's true, but I don't necessarily have to to live that way. No, that's not the way it works. We live what we believe. Amen. We live what we believe. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love him today? Does your life show it? Does your life show that you love him? Love his word. Love his truth. Love his church. Amen. Does your life show that? It should. Let me tell you this, church. It's supposed to. If you really love him, it's supposed to show those things. Amen. Amen. Verses 12 to 14. Some teach us to number our days. That's good advice, isn't it? I kind of figure I, I hope to make it to 80. Kind of doubt I do. What it says, if by reason they be four score years, right? I'd like to make it to 80. I'm 62. I got 18 more years. Try to make plans, take care of my wife. If I have to go before she does. Leave some stuff to my children, right? Hoping that they'll think good things about me when I'm gone. Brother, the best thing I want to leave my children is a secure home in heaven. You see, I want to see them again on the other side. Amen. 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 And brethren, if you don't think about that, you need to be thinking about that. You have a responsibility to your children. I think it talks about that in here. The children. There it is, verse 16. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. They thought about their children. We're supposed to think about our children. The example we set before our children. Amen. All those things. Anyway, where will we get to here? Verse 12. 
So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Here's Moses now, 40 years, wandering in the wilderness. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen it. The learned process, verse 12. The learned process. I want you to think about Moses and what he was going through. He said right there, teach us. So teach us. Lord God, look at the shape we're in. We have no hope of making it to the promised land. We're reaping the benefits of those people that didn't have any faith. Maybe your parents. Maybe your grandparents. They were reaping the benefits. Those people that were 19 years old and down, wandering in the wilderness 40 years, reaping the benefits of those that sinned before them. Teach us. Teaches. The learning process is sometimes very difficult. Very hard. You see, church, sometimes we get caught up in sin. Sin has a way of binding around us. Sin wants you dead. Amen. Devil wants you dead. He's going to do everything to do to discourage you and to hurt you and to bring you down. Amen. But as the Lord teaches us His ways, and we understand and we learn there to look at our life as a whole and give what's left that we have to Him. And we learn from those experiences. And we follow through and go through. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Isn't that beautiful? Let me be found faithful to you Lord God, from this moment and forth, the learning process is often very painful. I want to finish with this right here. Verses 16 and 17. I was with the, making a visit one day and there was another person there. And another denomination of people came up, you know. And we disagree with them on doctrine. This other person says, but you know, at least they're doing the work of the Lord. The work of the Lord. Look there at verse 16. Let thy work appear unto thy servants. Thy work. Let the work of the Lord appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. Let the work of God appear to us and the children. What's God working? What's He working? What's He working in your life? What's He working in our church? What's He working in our surroundings here? Verse 17, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work, there it is again, of our hands upon us. The work of our hands establish thou in it. Lord God, you show me what you want me to do. And I'll do it to the best of my ability. You lead me in the work that I do. You see, church, it's so important to allow the Lord to lead us in all that we do. Let's think about our children in closing. What are we supposed to want for our children? Do we live our lives and we number our days thinking about our children? I think we should. I think we should number our days thinking about our grandchildren. My daddy did that. My daddy did that. He thought about his grandchildren and on down. And I hope to be that same way. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. 
Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. My beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because your work is not in vain. Labor is not in vain. Let's all stand together. It's time to, time to close. Perhaps the Lord has spoken to your heart. Come in, sister. If the Lord has spoken to your heart and you have a burden and you just want to lay it on the altar, you can come and do that at this time. We will pray together. Amen. Page 181 in the red line. Page 181. 181. Sound like a good number to me. you folks. Look, we haven't baptized this week. I baptized a bunch of folks in here already. If you've never been baptized and you're a Christian, you need to be baptized. There may be some in here who never have been baptized. Jesus, and that's the last thing he told them. Go baptize them. And all the world that says it gives you that opportunity and this is Marilyn Blackwood I just want to make my profession public I want people to know where I stand that's it so I, I bet Brother Bobby I, I want to just say that I love the Lord and I know the Lord saved my soul and, and I know that God is going to look after me through my surgery mm -hmm. and take care of me and Wherever it may be, wherever they have to do, I know the Lord will say, will keep, will keep my, will keep my life, and, and get rid of, you know, everything. And I just want to praise God and, 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 and say thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else a word before we close? I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Lord's good. Awesome. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Anyone else? All right, let's have a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Jerry.